The no-name defense became sort of symbolic of a defense that, with a, not a lot of known players, became a terrific defense to be on. And after a while, we kind of loved it. Matter of fact, we took a, a, uh, a photo of the entire defense where we all wore the uh, Lone Ranger masks, and they said, who are these mask men? The story that I remember is from Tom Landry uh, commenting on the defense of the Dolphins. He said, well, they have a pretty good defense. I don't know any of the names of the people playing on their defense, but they play good defense. To this day, I, I really, I live with the term no name, but I don't really like it. I always considered it a misnomer. This was a defense with a lot of big names and a lot of big players. The leader of the defense without question was, was Nick. Nick was the guy that uh, took charge. Um, Typical attorney. I was five foot eleven, looking up into the masks of six foot five guys, but not one of them ever said anything back to me. Nick, although he wasn't big or he wasn't strong by today's standards of, uh, of being a linebacker, Nick brought so many other things that uh, were very important to us. I think if we'd have lost Nick Bonacani, I, that it would have been tough to keep it together the way that we kept it together. But it was defensive coordinator Bill Arnsparger who built it. Arnsparger brought in a defense that was popular in the college game. The 3-4 defense, which Miami called the 53. They call it the 53 defense, not because it had anything to do with the alignment. That was Bob Matheson's number. So it was very easy to remember. I said 53, all we had to do was look at Bob Matheson as he came into the lineup. Bob had the ability to stand up and drop back and be a linebacker, and he had the ability to get down and rush the passer. That was the beginning of the, the 53 defense. We named it after Matheson. That was his number, but it was the three-man line, and we had a lot of success with it. The 3-4 created and was dependent upon a new position, nose tackle, and Miami had just the man to man it. It's very important to have a good nose tackle, and Manny Fernandez was not a big player, but he was strong, active and he had the ability to control the center and to, to work laterally along the line of scrimmage. Manny Fernandez uh, without his glasses couldn't see one foot in front of him which was wonderful. All he looked at was the football and the guy. He was quick, he was strong, he was smart. I mean he never made mistakes. When the 53 was not in force, Bob Hines joined Fernandez at defensive tackle in the usual 4-3 alignment. While the defensive end positions were filled by Vern Dan Herter, number 83, and number 84, Bill Stanfield. Joining Bonacotti and Matheson at linebacker were number 59, Doug Swift, a refugee from the Canadian Football League, and number 57, Mike Colin, a 12th round draft choice whose nickname was Captain Crunch. In the secondary, cornerbacks Tim Foley and Curtis Johnson joined Dick Anderson and Jake Scott, the finest safety tandem ever to play the game. Jake Scott, 140 IQ, smart, was able to, to dissect an offensive uh, pass play before the play even started to develop. He was always in the right spot at the right time. Dick Anderson was a guy who took advantage of a defense more than anybody I've ever played against. When it came time, we needed an interception or a, a fumble recovery. Seemed like it was Dick Anderson that got in there and made it happen. It was a group of people, one time in the history of the game, were put together and performed beyond what anybody could ever have, ex ever have expected. No one ever expected a perfect season. Yet with a win in Super Bowl VII, the Dolphins could do it and more than wash away the bad taste left after a loss to the Cowboys in Super Bowl VI. You know, if we don't win that game and uh, contribute to the win in that game, well, we really haven't accomplished anything. The undefeated season goes down the drain and, and we lose the second Super Bowl, and so, uh, you know, we haven't accomplished anything. In Super Bowl VIII, the Dolphins could accomplish what only Vince Lombardi's Packers had done, back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins. The no-name defense made sure it happened. They were only allowed 37 plays in the entire game, which is a pretty good defensive effort for a bunch of no-names. The no-name defense has never been given any credit. I mean, it, it's absolutely ludicrous. It's insulting to me uh, to even think that these, these great players are not even considered to go into the Hall of Fame. I think it's an affront to our ball club, and uh, that's one of the big disappointments I have uh, in football. And and not having any of my teammates in the Hall of Fame. One of the things that uh, probably is more upsetting to me now than anything else is that there, there isn't anybody from that uh, no-name defense, the defense that helped us win two Super Bowls in the Hall of Fame. They were a bunch of no-names in the beginning, and, and they accepted that, uh, but it also was a challenge a little bit to them to, to work together and, and help accomplish something. They were just a remarkable group of guys who knew what the objective was, knew what the goal was, set out to achieve it, and then accomplished it.